We've created AI versions of Brad, AI version of Paul, and we're going to challenge these AI doctors with medical questions, and then we're going to critique it. All right, let's meet AI Paul and AI Brad. AI, is it going to replace doctors? Talking with docs is going to answer this question. I did a lot of research, and just spoiler alert, I do not think that artificial insemination is going to replace doctors. Artificial, ins no. artificial intelligence, not what? insemination. We're talking about artificial AI. intelligence. Okay. I know you think there's artificial intelligence all over the internet right now. There is, like, like, you mean like fake news? Yeah, no, no. I'm talking about machine learning artificial intelligence, okay? okay? Everybody's worried about it. And a wise woman once told me that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Ooh. So at Talking With Docs, we are extremely innovative, right? I'm an engineer as well as a physician, so I like to innovate. And we've teamed up to create AI versions of ourselves and we're here in an auditorium for our big reveal. Big Thanks. reveal. Thanks everybody for coming. For coming everybody. So, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence and we're going to demonstrate some of the artificial intelligence AI Paul, AI Brad that we've created. Okay, wait, so I know you're an engineer, but you're going to write the code for AI all of a sudden? No, no, I'm not going to code the AI. We've collaborated here. We've teamed up with Jason Liu from Idea Cadabra. Yes. Uh, who runs an AI company, yep. and we've been working with him for a while now, and he helped create these AI versions of Paul and AI version of Brad. Yeah. We've got him here today. Okay. Don't upset him. Okay, how come? Because he is a third stripe blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Oh, jeez. He can tear your LCL and leave you for dead. Well, I could fix it, but more importantly, is he gonna break my tactics? He just might. Jason, are you here? Oh, hi. I was just putting the finishing touches on your AI avatars. Hey guys. All right, come on in. Thanks all for right. coming all this way from San Francisco. Before you, our farthest guest traveled 20 minutes from Mississauga, so you broke the record by leaps and bounds. Great to have you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Cool, so I am Jason. I am the founder and CEO of Idea Cadabra. And what we are doing at Idea Cadabra is we are building modern and cutting edge AI to help content creators grow their channels. So, been working with you guys for a while now and we built all the technology you're gonna see today behind the AI avatar versions of yourself. So I'm very excited to show that to everybody and get your critiques on it. Yeah, so awesome. basically we've created AI versions of Brad, AI version of Paul, and we're going to challenge these AI doctors with medical questions, and then we're going to critique it. Now, it's very important to keep in mind that the answers that the AI talking with docs generate are completely AI. We didn't script these answers. Right. Second thing is the voices. We did not voice over these answers. These no. are AI generated voices that sound like Paul, sound like Brad, and the avatars are AI generated as well. Right. And even, even a couple of the jokes are AI generated. <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll see if they're jokes. Brad, are you nervous? R really nervous what you think they're gonna replace us. Let's think roll arms, learn how to operate. I think we have nothing to worry about. Yeah, AI with arms and legs is a robot. Like what if the AI hooks up with the robots we have in the OR and they have little AI robot babies? Yeah, I'm not worried. You don't worry about anything. That's what worries me. All right, let's meet AI Paul and AI Brad. Hey, welcome to another episode of AI Talking with Docs. I am AI Dr. Paul Zalzal. On today's episode, we're going to talk about why AI Talking with Docs is so much better than the human talking with Docs. Whoa, hang on a beat. This isn't a comparison type thing. Seriously, and if it was a competition, we would win because you're artificial intelligence and we are real intelligence. This is going to be easier than I thought. Real intelligence, that's not even a thing. Look, what do you guys put in a person with a worn out hip? Artificial hip. And what do humans put in diet sodas? Ar artificial sweeteners. So who do you turn to for smart answers about stuff? Artificial intelligence. Brah, wait, they're trying to trick us with their AI. Oh, uh, I don't like these guys already. Okay, listen, AI guys, you may be smart, but you can't make jokes like, hey, never say never, because you have to say it twice. That's a good one. But I bet you guys can't do this. Or this. But, but why would you even want to do that? 
I guess to hear better, I don't know. You could be like a superhero spy that could like hear everything. Okay, so okay, so they maybe have us a little bit there, but let's get on to the, the real medical stuff. Let's, let's ask them some real medical questions and see how they answer them. Okay, okay AI, Brad and AI Paul. First question, first medical question. This one's for war, uh, AI Paul. How do you treat knee arthritis? I don't understand you're interested in ways to treat knee arthritis. Let's, let's discuss some options. Um, Firstly, lifestyle changes are fundamental. Maintaining a healthy weight reduces undue strain on your knee joints. Engaging in low impact exercises like swimming or cycling is beneficial as they help maintain joint function without excessive stress. A tailored exercise routine guided by a physical therapist can also significantly improve mobility and alleviate pain. Okay, I like the way AI Paul started with lifestyle changes. That's cool. We certainly are big promoters of lifestyle modifications for sure. Okay, carry on. Regarding medications, over-the-counter pain relievers like Cetamimethan or Ocean or NSAIDs, which include ibuprofen and naproxen, might help in managing pain. However, always consult a healthcare professional to determine the best option for you. In some cases, corticosteroids or hyaluronic acid injections might be recommended. These are injected directly into the knee and can provide relief by reducing inflammation or mimicking the natural lubrication of the joints, respectively. So, so AI Paul sounds like he has marbles in his mouth when he pronounces medication. <laughs> okay, look, to be fair, there's some medical words I can't even pronounce. I, that's what I think is so cool is that it's so accurate. Okay, so AI Paul messed up a little on the pronunciation of some of the medications. I think he was trying to say ibuprofen, and acetaminophen, acetaminophen, and yeah. naproxen. And NSAIDs. Okay, okay. Yeah. Carry on. Physical therapy is another avenue. Physical therapists specialize in teaching exercises that strengthen the muscles around the knee, which can not only alleviate pain, but also improve overall joint functionality. Lastly, if mobility becomes a significant concern, there are assistive devices like braces or shoe inserts that can provide added support and alignment, making daily activities more manageable. Remember, each individual's experience with knee arthritis is unique. It's essential to collaborate with healthcare professionals to tailor the most effective treatment plan for your specific needs. AI Paul, thank you for that answer. I mean, Jason, that was pretty good. That was a lot of accurate information. And accurate appearance and sound of you. That's you, man. I'll give you the sound. I'm not 100% <laughs> on the appearance. I don't think I look like that. Um, however, the information provided was really good. Um, I thought um, one thing I would have included would have been um, you know, surgery. Yep. The AI didn't come up with a surgical recommendation after non-operative treatment fails. We recommend you know, some sort of surgical intervention like an osteotomy or an arthroplasty, a joint replacement. Uh, but, but other than that, uh, how, how did you get the voice to sound so much like mine? You know, we've been working hard at this technology and there's just been this huge revolution of AI in the last year. And uh, we think it's only going to get better. So uh, it's going to, believe it or not, it's going to get even better than that. So basically the AI just listened to me talking a bunch and then took what it learned and applied it to yep. new information. Uh, including your inflections, which okay. is quite interesting. That was good. Oh, yeah. um, the one thing I did notice is when I sort of give an answer or medical information, I like to slide a joke or two in. I notice your AI is pretty dry. There was no jokes there. Uh, I think you can do that too, actually. Why don't arthritic knees make um, good secret agents because they always crack under pressure. Ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> that is a classic Paul Zazzle dad joke. Okay. That is perfect. That AI is, 10 out of 10 on that one. That is not my laugh. That, but that joke uh -huh. is pretty funny. Uh -huh. I got to give it. That joke Good is joke. pretty funny. Okay. Okay. Brad, let's go. Okay, I'm going to ask AI Brad a question. Okay. How do you treat a hip fracture? Well, good question. Dealing with a broken hip can be quite challenging, but understand your treatment options is essential for recovery. Let me guide you through them. First and foremost, a broken hip often requires surgery. The type of surgery will depend on the location and severity of the fracture. There are a couple of common surgical methods. Internal fixation here, metal screws, plates, or rods are used to hold the hip bone together while it heals. Hip replacement. In cases where the break is severe or positioned in a manner that might not heal effectively with internal fixation part or all the hip joint might be replaced with an artificial joint. Post-surgery rehabilitation plays a crucial role. The primary objective is to regain strength and mobility. Physical therapy will usually be initiated soon after surgery to help patients gradually stand, walk, and regain independence in daily activities. 
Brad, I like the way your AI version puts some uh, inflections on challenging words, kind of like Captain James T. Kirk. I thought it was kind of a, a, a blend between Captain Kirk and Chandler Bing. And then on the Friends theme, I also look like I left my white strips on for too long. There, that one episode where Ross was like glowing. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it. It does sound like me. Only thing, I talk way faster. <laughs> Thankfully, AI has learned to talk slower so that people can actually understand it. <laughs> yeah, it's missing Brad's pressured speech, <laughs> but you did capture the AI teeth. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, let, let's hear some more from AI Brad. Okay. I like him. Medications are often prescribed to manage pain and prevent complications like clots. It's essential to adhere to the recommended doses and always consult with a healthcare professional. If there are any concerns beyond medical interventions, lifestyle adjustments can also be beneficial during the recovery phase. Using assistive devices like walkers or crutches can help maintain mobility while reducing the risk of further injury. Moreover, making home modifications such as eliminating trip hazards can make daily life safer and more manageable. Lastly, do remember that recovery from a broken hip can be a lengthy process, often requiring patience and determination. Rego checkups and adhering to medical advice are imperative for a smooth recovery journey. Remember, always collaborate with healthcare professionals to ensure the best care and approach tailored to your specific needs. So? I think that was a really good answer. I mean, I like the way it dove into a little bit of the occupational therapy aspect of things. I mean, 100%. That's, that's something, honestly, if someone asks me, and I have been asked how to treat hip, hip fractures before, I haven't gone into that much detail about the home modifications right. and the assisted devices after. I thought that was really thorough. Yeah, probably the one thing that we would add is, is probably more of the risks after surgery, the associated mortality, unfortunately. Yeah. This is a very significant issue. It mentions that, but specifically with respect to morbidity and, and death even, unfortunately. Personality-wise, you're pretty styling. I mean, you're smooth. <laughs> if I'm an AI woman out there, I think you'd have a good chance at getting a date. But most importantly, am I, am I funny? Do you think, Jason, were you able to capture how funny I am? Ah, I think we got that one too, actually. I was the broken hip guest speaker at the dance convention because they had unique insights into hip hop and an accidental expertise in break dancing. Ha ha ha. And that's the way you laugh. That is not the way I laugh. That is the way you laugh. So the joke was about a dance convention. Yes. Because of the associations with hip hop and yeah. accidental expertise in breakdancing. Break I think that's a funny joke. It's clever. I don't know about the delivery, sure. but the joke was funny. Yeah. Okay, it's time to ask AI Paul. Last question. The last question. AI Paul, should I take vitamin D supplementation? And considering vitamin D supplementation, it's essential to take into account several factors and the specific needs of your body. Vitamin D plays a significant role in various bodily functions, particularly in aiding calcium absorption for healthy bones. While our skin can produce vitamin D when exposed to sunlight, factors such as limited sun exposure due to your geographical location or lifestyle, wearing sunscreen, having darker skin tones, or dietary restrictions can reduce the amount our bodies naturally produce or receive. So should you take vitamin D supplements? Um, well, it depends. If you live in areas with limited sunlight, regularly wear sunscreen or cover most of your skin, have a darker complexion, are older, or follow a strict vegan diet, you might be at a higher risk of vitamin D deficiency. Even AI Paul's taking digs at your vegan lifestyle here. It's whole food plant-based, but you know what? <laughs> hey, like we said in all of our videos, what you eat, the critical part is not the diet, just the being sensible choices. All right, sorry, sorry to interrupt you there, AI Paul. <laughs> Carry on. The most definitive way to determine if uh, not enough you need supplementation is through a blood test that measures your vitamin D levels. If you are found to be deficient or at risk of deficiency, supplements could be beneficial, but remember the dosage matters. An excessive intake can lead to toxicity, which can be harmful to bones and kidneys. For considering supplements, uh, it's also good to think about natural dietary sources Fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, and sardines are rich in vitamin D. You can also look for fortified foods like some dairy products, orange juice, and cereals. In conclusion, vitamin D is crucial for our health, but the decision to take supplements should be based on individual factors and actual vitamin D levels. Always consult with a healthcare professional to make an informed decision tailored to your specific needs. Wow, that, that was a pretty good answer. Yep. Um, I just want to know. Does AI, Paul, like AI chicken wings? It's probably smart enough to know that, no. <laughs> okay, before I critique the answer, I wanna hear an AI joke 
about vitamin D. What's a vitamin D supplement's favorite day of the week? Sunday, of course. <laughs> okay, I do not laugh like that, but it's fine, it's yeah, AI. It's good. Okay, good. that was a really good answer. Okay. Uh, some features I liked about that, I like the joke, vitamin D's favorite day is Sunday because we get vitamin D from the sun, clever. Um, I like the way it says to consult with a healthcare provider. I think that's important, that's an important part of the aspect. It talked about measuring vitamin D levels if yep. you're real, like definitively worried about your levels. I mean, that's not routine. I'm surprised done. it didn't talk about maybe measurements like what would be a normal range or even recommended doses even though it's not person specific, yeah. but that would be more detail, I guess, depending on how much you asked it. Yeah, but I mean- It's impressive. A very, very good answer. Jason, that is incredible stuff you've created. Thank you uh, so much for collaborating with us on this project. And if you want to learn more about Idea Cadabra, Jason Liu's company, follow the link in the description. Jason? So we actually have some exclusive content on our channel that you can watch, which includes an interview with the two docs about their experiences today interacting with their pretty interesting AI avatars. So feel free to check that out when you follow our channel. Ha ha ha. Okay. AI Paul and AI Brad, thank you very much. You guys are pretty cool, but it's too bad you will never be as funny as us. I didn't get that joke. I know, right? Hey, you ever wonder why the thing you're looking for is always in the last place you look? Duck, because why would you keep looking after you find it? Oh yeah, good point. I guess you could find something else. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. Hey, that's my line. Not anymore. Thanks for watching. Please check out our long form content on YouTube. Wait, that's my line. Not anymore. Jason, thank you again for traveling so far to be with us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, you did awesome work. We really appreciate it. More to come. And uh, yeah, we look forward to working with you some more. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Thank you. Don't forget your laptop. Oh, yeah. This, is, uh, this has got all of the code on it, like every go. single line. <laughs> Don't lose that. All right, I won't. Oh, we got one more person to thank. Oh, Hamza, get okay. out of here from behind that camera. Okay. This is the guy, Hamza yes. Aziz. He yes. is a nurse in our emergency room here. Yep. He films our videos, edits them, and makes them look so awesome. Thank you so much. He, he, yeah, he was a big part of the, the big change you've probably noticed in the last six months where <laughs> We're a change for just Paul and I doing our best between ORs and clinics and everything, getting the content out there and, and Hamza just elevate us. And he learned how to do all that stuff on his channel, a channel called What Motivated You on YouTube and on other social media platforms. Please go check it out. It's really some many inspirational stories about a lot of really cool people that he's met. Yeah, you know what? Uh, this is the best, it's the most fun and such an amazing opportunity for me. And, uh, you know, Brad and Paul always make me feel like family and I've had such a good opportunity to do this. And, you know, learning from creating content at such a young age and, you know, helping other people do the exact same thing, blowing up on social media, that's what I love to do. And I'm so happy to work with you guys. Yeah, yeah we, we are, we're so grateful. Thanks, buddy. That's it. <laughs>